Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It's Saturday, the 26th of June, 2021, and we got a little bit to talk about out there, not just Hurricane Enrique in the eastern Pacific and uh, its impacts, but a couple of areas in the Atlantic to take note of as we end the month of June and move through the weekend and into the last work week before we get into July. Like I said, some interesting stuff to discuss here, so let's get on with it. First of all, Enrique on our tracking map here on the Hurricane Track Insider site. Strengthened quickly as it shed what I referred to yesterday as that weekend guest. It was this little area of energy competing with it off to its west. It got rid of that, or it dissipated, or however that works. It's gone, and now Enrique has really been able to strengthen. Wind is now up to 85 miles per hour, pressure down to 982. And as the headline says there, it's expected to turn towards the northwest tonight. And you can see that track map there showing it just off the coast of Mexico, a comfortable margin in terms of keeping hurricane conditions away. But the potential for some tropical storm wind along the coast here, flooding rain, some surf, high surf, dangerous surf along all of this area up here, including the southern Baja. That will be a problem over the next couple of days. So any interests there? do keep aware of that. Maybe this can track more up into the Gulf of California and keep some of its moisture intact and spread some of that up into the desert southwest. That is something that I will keep a watch on. Here's the satellite imagery of it, a very nice visible satellite loop this afternoon, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. There is Enrique in the eastern Pacific. Now all of this low cloudiness all through here indicates a much more stable air mass so Enrique is not too far from reaching an area where the water temperatures are cooler, the latent heat is not nearly as much, the upper ocean heat content isn't there, and it's going to not have a, a, too much of an opportunity to strengthen further after about the next day or so. But until then, who knows, maybe it reaches Category 3 intensity at some point. That wouldn't be surprising. And you can see these rain bands working their way, some of them onshore, that deep southeasterly flow, and some of it almost directly from the south to the Mexican coastline. And with the mountains down there, that orographic lift, those mountains coming right up against the coast, you can get some flash flooding and mudslides with these eastern Pacific cyclones, even though they don't make landfall. Interesting little feature in the Gulf of Mexico. Looks kind of like an upper level low has developed in here, and with that uh, indicating cold air, that's what upper level lows are, cold air in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. And that cold air over the very warm waters of the Gulf down here creates instability. And so you get some showers and thunderstorms, but nothing that looks like it's trying to organize into a tropical system. In the meantime, we do have this feature, which is interesting, south of Bermuda. Bermuda's right there. Uh, we'll take a look at this closer in a moment. The National Hurricane Center mentioning it in their latest tropical weather outlook. But first, let's take a look at the forecast for Enrique from the GFS. There is the vorticity signature associated with the hurricane right now. That's what it looks like. I talk about this a lot, and that is what you look for, a well-defined signal in the low-level vorticity. That's about 5,000 feet up, 850 millibars. And when you see that nice and solid like that, very much intact, well, that's the signature. That's what you look for. That's the fingerprint of a hurricane. So let's move this out into time. GFS moving it fairly close there to the coast of Mexico, and then it weakens very quickly uh, due to land interaction and the cooler water up there, and then it just kind of goes away. I mean, look, by 60 hours, not much energy left with that at all. So we'll see how that works out uh, over time. We'll look at it again tomorrow, maybe. Again, some of that remnant moisture can work its way up the Gulf of California and bring some of that up into the desert southwest, Tucson, and parts of southwest New Mexico. Maybe an increase in moisture because of that. Wouldn't be a bad thing, would it? I don't think so. All right, looking at the uh, Atlantic, this new area popped up today south of Bermuda. And you might look at this and go, oh boy, it's heading towards the southeast coast. And <laughs> that's not good. Well, you got to look at the info here. It's only 10% chance of development, but what we're seeing here is this area of low pressure and cloudiness and showers would work its way to the west here with time, bringing potentially some squally conditions, 
uh, conditions for the southeast coast over the next few days. So that's some, something we will watch, and we'll look at it on the vorticity signature in just a second and show you how you can keep track of it. In the meantime, 95L out here, which really gained uh, fame and not much fortune, though, but definitely some fame several days ago when the European ensembles just jumped all over it. You remember that. Well, kind of backed off, but lately the models are kind of hinting that maybe this tries to make a go at developing into something as it nears and enters the Caribbean. So we're going to have to watch this you know, once it gets farther to the west, as I'll show you here in a moment. The upper ocean heat content increases, and there is more energy available for it. Maybe the upper level winds get more favorable. So yes, this is going to track across, uh, still intact. And in fact, the Hurricane Center has increased the probability of development back up to 30%. It was down overall pretty low, but now we're starting to see it creep back up just a little bit there. So we'll watch both of these systems and see where they end up. So right now, the first system there, 95L, uh, way out here in the open Atlantic, once it gets past about 50 degrees longitude here, that's where the upper ocean heat content will increase. That is more deep, warm water for it to work with, more latent heat, and just a higher octane, uh, I mean, it's not really that, that's gasoline, but you get the idea, that's the analogy. It's just more energy that's available than where it is located currently. And as we look at the satellite imagery here, you can really see that is a huge circulation. So there's a lot of energy associated with this uh, system south and west of the Cabo Verde Islands. But not until it reaches about this longitude line right here, 50 degrees west, this window of opportunity over here is where it could start to gain some convection and some energy. But you can see all this dry air around it. You can easily spot that on the satellite imagery more dry air getting pushed off of Africa, and that's very typical for this time of year. Dry and dusty there. Morocco points south and east into the Sahara Desert. That Saharan air layer comes out. It's very prevalent. It gets wrapped into these systems as they try to inhale or create convection. They pull in that dry air and they sort of self-destruct. They have to get out here west of about 50 degrees and then they can blossom. And that just might happen. We'll have to watch this very closely especially for you folks in the windwards and the leewards, all right? Here's the other system up here south of Bermuda. Kind of interesting, surface pressures are high, as noted from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, but as this moves off to the west with time, it'll encounter warmer water temperatures, and you never know, right? You just, you never know. Not much emphasis in it and interest in it from the global models, but we'll see how that changes over time. It does show up nicely in the vorticity field, that is for sure. Here's another area down here in the Gulf, and then here's the really solid area associated with that tropical wave, 95L, there's Enrique. So yeah, the tropics are busy, lots of areas out there, seedlings or grapes along the grapevine, whatever you want to call it, and including some very ripe grapes there in the Pacific with Hurricane Enrique. But yes, the tropics are definitely full of potential and we'll just have to see if anything starts to take root. So the shear in the system in the Atlantic here uh, has dropped down uh, 10 knots. You know, it's reducing by about 10 knots as of late. There's Bermuda right there, east coast of the United States over here. So you know the, the system there south of Bermuda is in a more favorable environment than had been the case. So we'll see how that plays out. And this will be changeable through time. We'll just wait and see as our tropical wave there, 95L, moves about uh, off to the west with time. So let's take a look at that on the GFS here from this afternoon, or at least the morning run anyway. The 12Z run comes out and is available for us to peruse and check out what it says or shows in the afternoon. So there's 95L, beautiful representation of it in the vorticity field, including even all these little extra pieces of energy around there. You can really see the spiral nature to it. Amazing how these computer models can do this. The simulation of the atmosphere, again, at the 850 millibar level, 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. There's the reflection of the system near Bermuda. I'm going to leave that little mark there. And there's Enrique over there. And then watch what happens here in this little alleyway. Again, I'll leave that up as I move through the different frames here. This is 24 hours out. 
and then 36, 48. Yeah, you never know. That one little system approaching the Georgia, Florida coast, somewhere around there in 48 hours or so. Meanwhile, out in the Atlantic 95L, and let's just go back to where we were. Brief window of opportunity there, but then look what happens here beyond 72 hours. It starts to get a better reflection right there. And I'll leave that up for a moment. Uh, 96 hours, you see it starts to gel and come together just a little bit there. South of Puerto Rico, now we're out at, at day five, and that's where we will stop because, you know, chaos theory, right? I mean, there's just no reason to look beyond day five in this scenario. There will be times when we will look beyond the day five time frame, especially when there's like a very big hurricane out there, and we want to try to look and see what might be some interesting keys to the game later on. Uh, but right now, we don't have anything developed. But... It is interesting, you see there, at the 126 hour mark, that is a more robust signal than we have seen in the operational model here of the GFS. We'll have to see if the Euro starts to pick up on it. And it's only five days out, so it's not like it's way out in fantasy land, so to speak, in the modeling. Uh, and you note, too, that it's to the southwest of a very formidable and firmly entrenched Bermuda High. You know, subtropical ridge, kind of far to the south with its axis there, the at least the horizontal axis. But we'll see. Interesting as this comes into the islands for sure. All right, you can connect with us on Patreon. That's how we are crowdfunded, patreon.com slash hurricane track. You get access to that interactive map that I showed you, our live cams, our original programming, a very great and uh, uh, in in-depth podcast series called Stories from the Hurricane Highway, and more, patreon.com slash hurricane track. And of course, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. And the YouTube has really been growing as of late. Picked up over 400 subscribers in recent days. Trying to download a file there, sorry. Um, working on some projects. So yeah, the YouTube, uh, in fact, that's an old live stream from Cristobal last year that um, it's hard to believe that's already been a year. But anyway, it kind of threw me off. It's been really nice to see the YouTube increasing uh, because that's where a vast majority of people learn about what we do is through YouTube and then Twitter, I think, follows second and Facebook is a diff distant third. I've never really understood Facebook, why it hasn't grown, but whatever. As long as YouTube and Twitter are, I'll take two out of three. Um, anyway, it's great to have you along. That's the bottom line. You guys have a great rest of your weekend. I'll be back tomorrow with more on all of these systems. We'll see how everything plays along, and we will take it from there. All right? I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. Again, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. We'll reconvene and talk about it some more tomorrow.